Winter has finally come in full force. The lake is quickly turning to ice, and I've noticed the eagles have been busy, seeking to hunt one last time in the little pools of unfrozen water before a long, unforgiving winter sets in. I'm spending a lot of time with my family this December as we've come together to celebrate the end of the year. My mother spent well over 20 years following my father around the world to different military bases, and she has always dreamed of having a little house in a secluded area. At long last, she finally got it, and I'm so happy they can enjoy a quiet retirement here. While I was at their house, I found a very interesting book. It was about mostly forgotten words that describe unusual feelings. For example, heartspur, which is explained to be a noun for an unexpected surge of feelings brought about by an ordinary thing. For example, a certain smell or the sound of a creaking door, a train whistle in the distance. I related to this and another word in particular known as anamoya. It means nostalgia for a time you never experienced. I really love this word, I can relate to it. As a child, I used to have dreams about a great forest full of light and color and a vibrance that seemed to pulsate to a heartbeat deep in the roots of the trees. In that place, I felt an overwhelming sense of love everywhere. That dream never physically existed, but it has stayed with me as a place I yearn for always. It is a memory that comforts me and reminds me to seek out the light, no matter how dark the winter days become. I once read an article that commented on how there is a great void in the English language in regards to describing the complexity of emotions. For example, a word in this book was marumori, 
which in essence was described to mean the heartbreaking simplicity of ordinary things. And I love that description because it really nails down a feeling I've always had about the beauty of the mundane and the ordinary. Even during the coldest, loneliest months, there is artistry around us waiting to be appreciated, both nature's and man-made. Everything from the paintings I create to the glitter of the snow under the light of a full moon. It is a heartbreaking sort of beauty, when truly appreciated, I think, because it pulls us back to a time, perhaps when it was easier for us to enjoy simply living, or another possibility, that it gives that elusive anamoya, a yearning for a reality we innately know yet cannot grasp. Our human nature will always leave us unable to enjoy the present every day. Real life gets involved and things get messy, and that's okay, we cannot avoid it, though we can have moments of being truly grateful for what we do have. To paraphrase a quote from an admired philosopher, C.S. Lewis, if we find ourselves with a desire this world can't satisfy, a possible explanation is that we were not made for this world. Now, I don't expect everyone to believe this is true. I think there are many compelling explanations for this feeling. Either way, I think it is a good reminder that there is a lot out there that cannot yet be explained. So many mysteries worth considering. Iger is sleeping right next to my feet, so we'll see if he behaves himself. You gonna behave yourself? Yeah? Mm, maybe. <laughs> oh my goodness. We got, gosh, I, it seems like a foot of snow in one day. It's, it's amazing. It's just so beautiful. And honestly, I kind of just put aside all my plans just to spend some time enjoying it. The first snow is always just so magical. 
As you can see, I'm at my parents' house. We are planning to play a lot of board games this week. My sister is coming, I think in about a week as well, from Houston, Texas, and I'm just so excited to see her and spend some time with her. We haven't seen her for a while now, and I'm just so excited for her to come over here and enjoy some snow, and we're hopefully gonna go sledding and hiking and skiing, and we'll, we'll see what we get up to. It's gonna be really fun. I've recently been reading about all the different traditions and holidays that happen this time of year, and it is just amazing how many are out there. I uh, wrote down some of the main ones. I'm sure there are a lot more. There is, of course, Christmas, which is extremely popular. There's also, I was reading about Soyal, which seems to be a fascinating holiday. I don't know much about it, but I, I do want to learn a little more. Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, Las Posadas, which is a holiday I'd heard about, but I didn't uh, realize how popular it was, so I really enjoyed learning about that one. And of course, there's also the winter solstice or Yule. And gosh, there's just so many other ones. It's so wonderful to learn all about all the different traditions and celebrations this time of year. It is so beautiful. You know, I've always thought that, you know, if we all celebrate the same things, then the world would be just so much less interesting and less full of interesting stories. So I've, I've really enjoyed learning about all these celebrations this time of year. So if you are celebrating something this year, please let me know what you're celebrating. I'm very excited to learn about all these new traditions, some of them which I've not heard about before. Reading about these traditions got me more interested in reading some more Taino legends. I was reading a Taino myth about the son of a very powerful being in Taino mythology. The powerful being's name was Atabe, and she had a son called Jukaju. Jukaju wanted to give the darkness of the night more beauty, and so he went down into the deepest caverns and he took out gemstones, and he went up and he put the gemstones into the sky, and the gemstones reflected the light of the sun and moon and created the night sky and all the constellations and all the stars. And I thought that was such a beautiful way and creative way to describe the night sky and how in this myth it was made. I thought it was so beautiful. I think it is so important to have respect and reverence for these stories that were so important to so many groups of people in the past and sometimes even in the present. And I've just found a lot of inspiration from reading those old myths and legends from, from all over the world, even Cel Celtic myths and legends. On my father's side of the family, he has a lot of European ancestry and a lot of Celtic ancestry. And so reading as well, the myths of that area as well has been so fascinating. And it is so exciting to just connect with the past and connect with stories. Anyway, I'm just so excited to have my family together this month to play games and eat good food and make coquito and just have such a wonderful time. So it's gonna be it's gonna be lovely. And I am sure we're gonna get probably another foot of snow before the month is out. So I'm anticipating to be quite snowed in for a while. So that will be wonderful. There is a book I mention in this video called The Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows. And I thought it was such a funny title, but once I picked up the book and I started reading it, I found it to be incredible. It had so many interesting words and phrases that are rarely used or no longer used, or at the very least not used in the English language very much. And I found it really fun to read about it. One word, I, I can't remember what the word exactly was, but it pretty much was meant to describe the nostalgic feel that you get when you hear a train whistle in the distance and how that often gives you a sense of wanderlust. And I thought that was such an interesting word to describe a feeling that I think a lot of us can relate to. I thought it, I thought it was really fun. Lastly, I wanted to say thank you for all the wonderful birthday wishes. It was a really lovely week. I actually received some very meaningful gifts and I have not been able to get in contact with all uh, the gift givers. So if your name is Tammy, I want to say thank you very much for the gift you left for me. 
It was very meaningful and very unexpected and a wonderful surprise. And I have your name, but I cannot find any way to contact you and tell you thank you personally. So if you're seeing this, know that I'm very, very grateful. Also, a lovely artist known as Eve sent me a beautiful meditation orb that I will show you some images. It is so beautiful. I've shown her work before, but um, she sent me this one unexpectedly and it happened to align with my birthday, which I don't think she intended, but it was really fun anyway. I just counted it as a birthday gift and it was, it was really lovely to receive and it is just beautiful. So I will leave a link to her work down below in case you wanna see more of her carvings. They're just absolutely gorgeous. Since I wasn't feeling too great, I've gotten quite behind on some replies and some messages I've been meaning to send. So I apologize for that. If you have been kept waiting, I've been doing my best. It's been a very busy month. As you can see in this video, I've been working so hard on creating a lot of new art pieces and trying to get them all finished for a big book project I'm working on. It has just been a huge, feet so I am doing my best and trying to get on top of things but we'll see anyway I hope you're doing well I know that the holidays can be a sometimes difficult time for a lot of people depending on what your family life is like and where you are in life and what your hopes are for the new year I'm sending you hugs and hope that you can find some moments of peace and joy this month I know usually it can feel quite hectic but I hope that the new year will provide a lot of incredible new opportunities and some new beginnings and a time to winter and to come into the spring with new life and new excitement and enthusiasm. So I will see you guys soon. I'm sending my love. Goodbye.